Hey guys, it's Alex here. Now in the reef aquarium hobby, lighting is one of the most expensive purchases you are likely to make, and for good reason. A really good light can make your tank look fantastic, even if you've just got a few rocks and a few fish. And while most people will spend hundreds or even thousands of pounds on lighting, today I'm gonna see if it needs to be that way by checking out the cheapest aquarium light I could find on Amazon. And that is this. It is the GrowStar 18 Watt, which as far as I can tell is the cheapest proper full spectrum light on Amazon. It cost me £12.61, which is about $14, 17 euros or $23 Australian. So today I'm gonna to put it through its paces and see what £12 gets you for a light that is designed to look after some of the most delicate creatures on the planet. Now, if it's your first time here at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get stuck in. Apart from the price, there are a few clues straight off the bat that the GrowStar 18 Watt might not be the best light in the world. The product headline seems to suggest it's suitable for plant growth, reef tanks and freshwater review gyms, so it's safe to say it's marketed as a jack of all trades and not a master of one. Although there are photos of a pink plant light on the description, so I'd guess they just use the same description for various lights. And the detail below does in fact claim that it's full reef tank spectrum, including royal blue, blue, UV and white at 6500 and 14000 Kelvin. Although they appear to have forgotten about the red and green LEDs, so you can probably take the description with a pinch of salt. It also makes the rather bold claim that it outperforms traditional LED aquarium lights, and I want you to remember that point for later. To be fair though, the closest mainstream light in terms of power output is the Kessel A80, which is a 15 watt light, so 20% down on the GrowStar. And the Kessel costs £150, for which money you could buy a dozen GrowStars. In the box then, you get the light. And that's it. It's just a bulb with a screw fitting, so you need to buy your own bulb holder and tank mount. Now I couldn't find a decent bracket for the light for this particular setup, so I just held it up while I filmed. Something that probably won't be practical full time. For the power cable though, I bought this red corded bulb holder, which I think suits the GrowStar. Although it cost me £6, which is almost 50% of the cost of the light, a trick they've learned from the Ecotech School of Accessory Pricing. But credit where it is due, and purely from an aesthetics perspective, I'd be happy to have this light above my tank in my living room. The matte black heatsink has a sort of nouveau industrial look to it that wouldn't look out of place in a hipster cafe. And the LEDs sit flush to the surface, which makes the unit look well put together, even if it's not. The white plastic base does break up the otherwise clean look a little, but that's nothing a black Sharpie won't fix. Although buying a Sharpie will add another 20% to the price of the light, of course. It comes with 18 1 watt LEDs, 90 degree optical lenses and an aluminium heatsink. The heatsink appears to do something as it does get slightly warm to the touch, but I suspect a little more R&D went into the heatsink on the latest generation of Radions. So that's the form then, what about the function? I set up this 20 litre tank to demonstrate the GrowStar's prowess. Now there is a little shimmer to be fair, and I'd probably say that's its stronger suit. The shimmer lines are reasonably natural and they do enhance your viewing experience. It is hard to tell what colour separation there is without a sand bed, but it does seem to do okay there. And there was no major disco balling that I could see, unlike some far more expensive lights. But that is about it for the positives. While the light does look blue to the eye, the colour it gives off is very much on the white slash yellow side, and it makes this gorgeous Zoa colony look rather drab, with only 50 shades of beige on display. Whereas the reality is that it has shades of pink, yellow, green and purple, and is probably one of my nicer coral colonies. And while it is extraordinarily bright in the centre, there is naff all in the way of spread and it even struggles to illuminate all of this 6 inch wide colony at a mounting height of over 12 inches. That effect is exaggerated massively at a mounting height of 6 inches, where it looks like an alien spaceship trying to beam the coral up and take it away for a serious probing. And unfortunately it gets worse, quite a lot worse in fact. I did a par test to measure the GrowStar's output using the BRS method of checking various points in a dry tank. I used a 30 gallon 2 foot by 18 inch by 18 inch nano tank with the light mounted at 8 inches above where the waterline would be, and I tested the part at the bottom of the tank. 
As you might expect from a 12 pound light, the results weren't very impressive. And the centre had a huge hotspot of 631 par. For reference, the highest point anywhere in my 4 foot by 2 by 2 SPS dominated tank is around 400 par. And just 6 inches to the right of the Grow Stars peak, par dropped to 40. So you lose 94% of the Grow Stars output in the space of just 6 inches. And 12 inches the other way, there was zero par. And this is what that looks like on a heat map. Not exactly what I'd call an even distribution of light. Now the fact that it only provides par over an 18 inch square is not a problem. In fact, for an 18 watt light, I actually think that's pretty impressive. But the distribution of par is much more becoming of an LED light that costs the same as a trip to the cinema. And it rather shows up the Growstar's ambitious claim that it outperforms traditional LED lights. Quite frankly, you might as well buy a torch instead. And of course there are other things I couldn't test. For me, safety, reliability and spectrum will all be big question marks on a product like this, and I'd expect it to grow algae better than it does corals. I had intended to test it for a week over my frag tank, but the par test was enough to convince me that it would nuke any coral that went under its tractor beam. However, we reef keepers are nothing if not creative, and I did manage to find some uses for it. It makes a cracking light for your understairs cabinet, so long as you only want 10% of your space lit up, in blue, or you can use it as a sort of blue bat signal to other reef keepers outside your front door, or simply to irritate your girlfriend while she's trying to read a text. So maybe it was £12 well spent after all. So that is the Growstar 18 watt full spectrum light then, and if you ever needed an example of you get what you pay for, this is well and truly it. Now unless fitting a diffuser was an option, I think it would actually be a much better light if the LEDs were half as powerful, because at least it wouldn't be nuking everything under its tractor beam. But for now, all I'll say is that it doesn't get my seal of approval, although I did have a lot of fun buying it and making this video, and it was really interesting to see what a £12 light gives you. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, happy reefing.